All right, so today we're going to be looking at current electricity. So we have been discussing uh, static electricity for about a week now. And we understand that static electricity is different from um, electrical energy or electrical current because static electricity stands still. It builds up on one object, whereas electrical current is going to be the movement. So that's the really key part here, the movement of electrons from one place to another. So we, if we're going to plug in our phone to get charged in the evening, we need electrons to move through the wires in the wall of our house and into our cell phone to charge it. Okay, so that is electrical current. So from there, let's look at what the definition of electrical current is. So it's actually the flow of electrons from one location to the other, okay? So if we look at this, okay, this is a diagram of uh, a circuit itself, and it has a wire. It's representing those wires in two spots, so it's showing those yellow dots as electrons, but normally it's a single line. This is representing our power source, so either um, an outlet in the wall or a battery. There's often a positive, or there always, it always is, sorry, a negative end and a positive end, okay? And the electrons are going to flow from that negative end all the, all the way around and come back to the other side. When it completes that circuit, when it completes the loop, we get electron flow, which means that we can charge a battery or turn on a light. Okay, so the direction of flow is always going to be from the negative end to the positive end. Okay, all right, so there is four main uh, components to your circuit. Um, I would like you to write those down on your guided note. Okay, the first thing that you need, okay, is a source of energy. So a source of energy could be something like a battery, or a plug outlet in your home. You also need wire, something that will allow electrons to flow through it, okay? The third is we should always have some sort of switch, okay? Uh, a switch is going to allow you to turn on or off um, a circuit. And then the last component is something uh, called a load. And a load is anything that's using the electricity. So your TV, your phone, your oven, a light bulb, okay? These are all things that are going to be considered a load. Here is a set of symbols that we use in diagrams to represent each of those. Okay, now on your sheet, you'll notice that there is a spot for al an alternative to a lamp, which is also, whoops, sorry, let's go back here, um, a lamp, which is an alternative um, symbol for a lamp. A lamp is just a light. Okay, so it can also be represented by this symbol, so a circle with wires connecting on either end, okay? And then a loop in the center, okay? There's other ones that are represented by the same sort of outline again, but there's no loop, it's just a, an upside down U, okay? So those are all three of those. This one here that's already drawn in and these two that I've drawn in are representing lights or lamps and any of those would be acceptable, okay? There's an alternative also for um, a fuse and a fuse, sorry, not a fuse, a resistor. Um, and it's going to be a wire and a zigzag line, okay, to represent a resistor. A resistor makes sure that, you were, that your circuit doesn't overload and become too hot and catch on fire, okay? Also here, we have a switch, so something to turn your circuit on and off. We have a cell, and a cell and a battery are pretty much the same thing, and for our course, we're gonna say that they're the same thing. This is a one cell battery, whereas this one is a three cell battery. And you can see that, that we have a short line and then a long line, okay? That's one, short, long, short, long, short, long, okay, representing three together. We also have um, a voltmeter, so that's measuring the voltage. Okay, and we also have an ammeter, 
which is measuring the current in the circuit. Okay, down at the bottom we have a fuse and a fuse is going to um, make sure that the circuit doesn't overload again, protects it, okay, catch on fire. And we also have a motor, okay? So the M with a circle in around it is representing a motor, okay? All right, so here's an example of a circuit diagram and we're gonna practice making circuit diagrams together. So let's just break down the components, okay? Over here we have a battery Okay, the electrons are going to flow down the wire and around the wire, so the straight lines, okay, from the negative end to the positive end. Okay, this is considered a one cell battery. Okay, we also have a light bulb, so that's representing, represented by this circle with the X in the middle. And we have a switch, and this switch is open. Okay, so if it went straight across, like this one, that would be considered a closed switch. So looking at our open and closed switch, take a moment and write down the, oh sorry, I think it's already provided for you, the open and closed switch, the difference between the two. So an open switch, it means that your circuit is off. So this is equivalent to walking out of your bedroom in the middle of the night and turning your light off, okay? Electrons cannot flow through the circuit and will not turn your light on, so it becomes dark in your room. A closed circuit, is the opposite. So a close is when the switch is on. And this is where the circuit can be complete and we see a light turn on um, or an oven start to turn on, okay? So when drawing electrical circuits, there's some rules that we should follow. The first is that wires are always drawn with straight lines, okay? Try to use a ruler. Now I know that won't be 100% uh, you won't be able to do that 100% of the time. I'm not able to do that on my iPad today, um, but you're gonna try your best. You're also going to try to use square corners when drawing it because it becomes way more organized and easier to compare circuits to each other. You're going to place the battery on the left-hand side of your diagram. So if this is a quick diagram here, I'm always placing my battery, okay, on the left hand side of my diagram. Sorry, I didn't finish my light bulb there, okay? So the battery is on the left hand side of my diagram. Voltmeters are connected in parallel and ammeters are connected in series. Now that might be a little confusing right now, but we're gonna come back to it, so hold on to that idea. So let's take a look at the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Okay, so the first one here is a series circuit and it's one big loop. So if we take a look at this diagram here, there's only one path for the electrons to flow. Okay, it's actually would be going from this way down and around. Um, this uh, is, sorry, this uh, switch is open so the electrons would not be flowing through it. Okay, so how many batteries does this diagram have? It has two batteries. So if we take a look here, you can see there's one here and one here. Is the switch open or is it closed? It is open, okay? Which end is the negative end? The negative end is always the short end and the positive end is always the long end, okay? If we take a look at a parallel circuit now, okay, a, par a parallel circuit is going to have branches, okay? Or multiple loops that the electrons could flow through, okay? So if we look here, if I'm leaving the battery and it's starting to flow. This is an open circuit or open switch, so the electrons would get stuck here. But let's pretend it was closed and it could flow past it. The electrons could come up, go past this light bulb here, and go back to the battery. Or, whoops, they also could flow from the battery negative end all the way down, down here and back around. So parallel circuits are really useful because in our house, we don't wanna walk in our front door and turn on one light switch in our oven and our microwave and um, all our lights in our house, anything that's plugged into an outlet turn on, right? We wanna be able to control them one at a time. And a, a parallel circuit is going to allow you to do that. So how many loads are in this circuit? The loads are going to be anything that uses electricity. So we have two lights here. So our number of loads is two. 
How many switches do we have? We have one switch, it's right here. And what is the flow of electrons? Electrons are going from our negative end to our positive end, so they're gonna flow in this direction, okay? They also could come down and then go around here as well. Okay, so let's do some examples together, okay? Let's, first thing that I always do is underline the components that are being asked of you to include in your diagram. So I'm gonna use my purple color here and I'm going to underline one battery one switch and one light bulb. That just helps remind myself that I need to conclude all of those components in my final diagram, okay? I'm gonna always start with the left-hand side of my diagram with the battery, okay? So I'm gonna do a one cell battery because it says one battery. Then I can check it off, okay? Then I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to start to make a loop. Now, unless it says otherwise, we're going, to uh, we're going to assume that it is a series diagram, okay? So we're going to have one loop here, whoops. And we're going to add in a switch and a light bulb and then come back to our battery, okay? So my switch is right here, so I can check that off, done. And one light bulb is right here. I can check that off. I've done all the components of my diagram. The other thing I can add in always is the negative and the positive end of my battery and the flow of electrons. So which way it is actually going around. Okay, whoops, sorry. All right, on to circuit number two. Let's take a look at this. Once again, I'm going to take my components. I'm going to underline them. So we need two batteries in series, one switch, three light bulbs in series, and one ammeter. That's a lot of stuff, okay? So very first thing that we're gonna do is always start with our batteries. It says um, two batteries in series, okay? So we have one battery, two batteries, done, okay? They're in series with each other because they're in the same loop. Then from there, we're going to have, this is a series circuit because it doesn't talk about branches or being a parallel circuit. So I'm gonna start at my battery, I'm gonna come down, I'm going to make a switch, okay? And then I'm going to add in three light bulbs. One, two, oops, sorry, three. And the last thing that I need to include is an ammeter. So an ammeter is going to measure the current and it gets put into the actual loop of the circuit, okay? So what I mean by that is it's on this wire, okay? Ammeters in series, that's what it means. It's in the loop of the diagram, okay? All right, the last thing I'm going to do is label my negative and my positive end and my flow of electrons, okay? All right, last diagram for today as a, an example, okay? We're gonna have a two cells in series, so that's our battery, connected to three light bulbs in parallel. Okay, so this is a parallel diagram that we're going to be drawing. So remembering that parallel diagrams have branches off of the circuit. So it's not one loop, it's multiple loops, okay? We also need a voltmeter to measure the light, one of the light bulbs, okay? very first thing you're going to do is start with those batteries. So two cells in series. One, two. Then we're going to connect it. And it doesn't talk about um, a switch. It should have a switch. I'm just going to add one in. Okay, that was an oversight on my part. We're going to make our first branch up and a light bulb and then take it back to the battery. Okay, so there's one branch. Then from there, I'm going to branch off again a second branch with a light bulb on it, okay? And then one more, because it says three light bulbs in parallel with each other, there's the three, okay? So I've got that, perfect, and I've got that, wonderful. Okay, the last component is adding in a voltmeter. Now a voltmeter is always inserted in the uh, circuit as, um, in parallel with something. So we're measuring the voltage in and out of a light bulb. 
So a voltmeter is going to measure how much electricity that light is actually using. So to do that, we need to measure the electricity going into the light bulb and the electricity coming out of the light bulb. Okay, so we make a little diagram here. It attaches to either side of the wires on either side of the light bulb, and then we have a V to represent our voltmeter. Okay, so that is going to measure the current here, or sorry, the voltage here and the voltage here, and it's gonna see how much voltage the uh, light bulb actually used up, okay? Last thing we do again is label our positive and our negative end and our flow of electrons. All right, I'd like you to take a moment now and try to do questions four through seven on the bottom of your guided note sheet, and you can check back on D2L uh, for the answers for those. If you have any questions, please email me. This was not an easy lesson.